Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall, and today we're going to be talking about animating with Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Animate. For those of you who don't know, Adobe Animate is a powerhouse application designed for building interactive animations for video, games, and the web. With it, you can bring animation and banner ads to life, create avatars, and create animated and interactive infographics. You can also publish to multiple platforms on just about any format. That includes everything from an animated GIF to a high-end video format. Combine this with Adobe Illustrator, and you've got easy access to be truly creative. For this eight-part beginner tutorial, we're going to learn how to create this simple web tutorial using Illustrator and Animate. Here are the steps. Part one, let's get started. Building Illustrator art, file setup, and importing. Part two, create a looping animated symbol. Part three, using motion tweens for basic animation. Part four, adding stop actions. Part five, creating buttons and button-based actions. Part six, advanced buttons, basic button hover animation, and linking to outside URLs. Part seven, publishing options for your web ad. Part eight, importing into an adaptive web page. This is step one, get started building Illustrator art, file setup, and importing. And a quick note, if you're coming in at one of the latter stages of the tutorial, be sure you start at step one. That's always gonna be the most helpful, and that'll get you on the path to creativity the fastest. For this piece, we're offering an Illustrator file down below or in your Canvas page to get started. Let's go. Before we get started looking at our Illustrator file, Let's look at our storyboard. You ask yourself, what is the storyboard? The storyboard is your plan. It is basically a visualization of the piece that you are going to be putting together. As you can see on screen, this is the storyboard that I've created for our We Ask That You Mask animated storyboard. Let's take a look at panel one. As you can see right away, there's a graphic of what you will first see when the animation opens. Next thing you'll notice is right directly underneath panel one, it says the animation size is 600 pixels tall by 900 pixels wide. Beneath that, animation begins with looping animation of clouds running across the screen. Now, why do I put that? Some people watching this might think, well, that's completely obvious. But one of the things that we do when we build our storyboard is we build a contract with ourselves. The storyboard is what we're always going to be checking back on to see if what we're building is exactly according to plan. Notice that I put 600 pixels tall by 900 pixels wide. It sounds sort of obvious when you do it, but it leaves nothing to question. I think that's really important when we talk about our storyboard. If we look at panel two, we've got the graphic of what panel two will be, obviously. We've got our graphic, what happens after our animation begins. Notice that it says people scroll in from the bottom first, then intro sign will scroll up from the bottom. Next, the click here bottom button scrolls up. This tells exactly what we expect and want to happen. And this tells us how we're going to build our piece and animate once we get to that point. It also tells us what we're going to be doing in Illustrator as we're building our piece out prior to importing into Animate. Note that I included the type in here. Headline type will be Bebis, and all other type will be universe condensed. I also noted color information. Colors are bold and bright, and they adhere to primary colors. All buttons will have hover and click colors. Again, as simple as this artwork is, everything is pretty explicit in what I intend to do. Not only does this work for yourself, but if you're sharing this with a client, perhaps, or sharing this with somebody else who you're going to be building it along with, Again, it eliminates all questions. This is the contract as to what you're going to be building. Let's look at panel three. When click here button is selected, intro sign goes back to bottom and sign two comes up from the bottom. Sign two will have two buttons. Visit CDC website. Notice that it is labeled in the artwork. We'll have an external link to the CDC website. That link will open in a new window. Again, we're trying to be as explicit as possible. Close will be an action button to close sign two, which will scroll out of the scene from the bottom. 
will loop back to panel two after the people have popped up. Again, there's nothing left to chance or left to question when we create our storyboard. Why? Because it eliminates all the questions that we may have had prior to building our storyboard. Once we've got that, we're ready to move into our Illustrator piece. So let's go ahead and look at that. As you can see in the Illustrator file that we're looking at here, it's got all of the artwork. You can refer back to the storyboard itself and you'll see everything matching the storyboard. One thing that's really important when we're building our Illustrator file prior to constructing our Animate file is it's built to size. Note that our Illustrator file here, if you look at our ruler, is 900 pixels wide by 600 pixels tall. One clear note here is that the file import won't work properly if it's not scaled to the exact same size that you're going to be constructing your Animate file in. So when you construct your Illustrator file, be sure that it is scaled exactly the same size as your Animate file. The next thing we want to look at is the layers itself. If we open up our Layers palette, notice that all the layers are explicitly broken down according to what they're going to be doing. When you build out your Illustrator piece, you'll notice that everything is layered out. If we look from the bottom to the top, we've got the layers, the clouds, the headline, the sign, the sign link CDC, the sign link close, the subjects, and the button. What I'm doing is I'm leaving nothing to chance because I've got everything clearly labeled. When I open my file up in Adobe Animate, I'll see all of the Illustrator layers imported into Animate. So that'll make it easier for me to construct my animation. Again, always set your Illustrator file up with layers so that they can import cleanly and easily into Animate. Ultimately, that's going to save you a lot of work, as you will see. One final note about our Illustrator piece is that you want to get as much of the upfront work done as possible. Be as explicit with your Illustrator file as possible prior to import into Animate. Let's take our next step into Animate itself, and let's go ahead and import our Illustrator file into it. Now that we're into Adobe Animate, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. Again, as I'd mentioned previously, we want to make sure that our file is scaled properly and is going to export to the right platform. Again, this time around, we're going to be building a 900 pixel wide by 600 pixel tall piece of artwork that's going to export to an HTML5 canvas. What's that? HTML5 is going to give us the ability to export directly into a web page. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and scale our piece one more time to 900 pixels wide, 600 pixels tall. Our platform type is an HTML5 canvas, and we're going to ignore any and all presets. Let's go ahead and create. There we go. Now we've created our piece. Let me give you a quick tour of our piece. The first window here is called our stage, and we're going to be referring to that a lot as such. That's where everything is going to land visually. Now on the right side, we've got our property, library, and asset windows. This is going to give us the information on individual pieces and individual actions. If we look at the bottom of our page, we've got the timeline and output. The timeline is going to show exactly what's going to be happening frame by frame within our animation. Our output window will give us detailed information on any potential errors that will be coming up as we're outputting our file to whatever platform we're doing. Let's import our file. In order to import our file, we're going to select File, Import, and we're going to select Import to Stage. We're going to select our file. In this case, it's animate file. We'll open that. After we select import, we've got a bunch of things going on. Note straight away that we've got a listing of all the layers and all of the elements within our Illustrator piece. Can arrow back up to the top. What you can do here is you can select select all layers if all layers are not selected. However, by default, all layers are selected. If you want to deselect any specific layer, all you need to do 
is click on the check mark and it will automatically be deselected. If you want to select it, again, just click on any of the check marks that you want selected. Once we've got all the layers selected, we want to make sure that convert layers to animate layers is selected. We want to take advantage of those layers that we have already pre-selected because those are most advantageous for us to create the story and the animation. Next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we've got place objects at original position. We don't want anything move around. We don't want to take any chances. Again, our Illustrator file is Bible. Next thing we want to look at is we want to make sure that there are no incompatibilities. If there is an incompatibility report, just like you see on screen, you want to click on it and you want to take a look at what that incompatibility is. More often than not, the incompatibility is going to relate to type. As you can see right here, that's exactly what's happening. You'll notice that it says paragraph contains multiple letting values, justify with last line, not left aligned. What you want to do here is you want to make sure that if Animate offers any recommended fixes that you accept it. So make sure to have Apply Recommended Import Settings checked. Click OK and that will resolve any import issues. Next thing, select import. Note right away that your file is imported exactly as it was in Adobe Illustrator. You can also notice straight away that under the output window, there are a whole lot of warnings. I wouldn't worry about them too much until I start playing with my animate file. Generally, there are no issues here, so I'm gonna skip on the output and I'm going to select timeline. Now, if I drag my timeline up, you'll see something else. Note that all of the Illustrator layers have been imported into the Animate timeline exactly as specified. That's going to be a huge advantage to us. With that being said, all we need to do is deselect our imported file. We'll click anywhere on the stage. Let's bring our artwork to center of the stage. And we are done. Let's get ready to get started with step number two. There you go. We have completed step one. Proceed to the next step. All right. If you have any questions, comments, or critiques, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, subscribe. I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. We'll see you next time. See you.